So what we thought was just going to be an extended spring break turned into finishing our year online. And then that turned into potentially starting next year online. And in a world full of uncertainty, I thought it would be a good idea to show you how to turn any resource digital. First things first, I am not driving, my husband is, so there's that. But welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Riley White and I'm a third grade reading, writing, and ELA teacher. This car lighting is not really doing it for me. I think I speak for everyone when I say that last semester was kind of a hot mess with digital learning. I think we all just went into it not really knowing what we were doing, how to do it. Uh, we had hours to prepare. Everything just happened so quickly. But I figured I would help you better prepare for next year. And even if we don't go digital, tech integration is awesome in the classroom and it helps your students be better prepared in case there were another emergency where we have to go digital. So without further ado, let's get into this tutorial. So the first step is to get the assignment that we're going to use and I just open it in a PDF. After you're viewing the PDF, go to File, Export, and then choose your destination to where you want to export the file. Also, make sure you change that PDF to PNG or JPEG. These are what's going to save it as an image, which will let you set it as your background, which will prevent your students from being able to move it when they try to do the work. Your document is on a hard copy instead of a file on your computer. You can also just scan it in through your school's copier Hopefully you guys can do that, I know we can, and you can just save it as a JPEG or PNG from there. Here you can see I'm just changing my screen dimensions because in order for it to set properly as the background, I want it to have the same dimensions, and 9 times out of 10, the work is going to be your standard size piece of paper, so you can make it 8.5 by 11, or 11 by 8.5, depending on whether it's portrait or landscape. Once it's sized correctly, I go to background, I chose upload image, and I'm selecting the image that I just saved, which is the assignment itself, and then click done. Now you can see that since it's the background, it stops your students from being able to move it. I can't tell you how many times my students deleted a slide or the background, and this has been the perfect solution to the problem. Since they're unable to write on slides, all I have to do now is go in and insert a text box. I will usually type, you know, type answer here or something like that to let the students know exactly where to type. I also changed the color of the text box itself because it's a lot easier for students to make sure they haven't missed a question if they just know, okay, I'm responsible for filling in all of the blue boxes. And I'm just gonna go through and do that for every question that would have a typed response. My students obviously can't use crayons to highlight, but what they can do is move underlines that I pre-install. So to do that, I'm just going to add a couple of lines that correspond to the color. And the students will actually be able to drag and drop these to underline the main idea and supporting details in the passage. Since there's only one main idea, I'm only going to add one red line because they'll only need one. But since they can have multiple supporting details, I'm going to add several blue lines. That way they can drag and drop more than once. And now you can see just how the students would be able to take those lines and make them go where they need to go to show you that they can identify the main idea and supporting details. This particular assignment doesn't have any multiple choice questions. However, if you had something like a multiple choice assignment or any situation where you needed students to be able to circle or identify an answer, you can give them a little bank of tools off to the side as well as instructions on how to use that, and then they're able to drag and drop from off the screen as well. And as you can see, you can just drag and drop the circles to identify other answers as well. Just make sure you stack multiple if the students need more than one. You can also make your very own assignments like I'm doing here with my slides. Um, this is by no means the prettiest assignment. I just wanted to get the point across, so it's very basic. But 
you can create your own assignment and then then simply just add whatever text boxes, circles, lines, whatever you may need. You can really get creative with matching or multiple choice, short answer. I know I say this all the time, but the possibilities really are endless. Just make sure that before you add anything you expect your students to interact with, such as multiple choice circles, lines for underlining text boxes, and so on, remember to select your whole screen, then go to File, Download, PNG, save that as an image, delete everything from your slide, and set the background as that image. This is the step that basically locks all of your original text so that your students can't manipulate that in any way. Once your background is locked, like mine is here, you can then add all of the elements that you want your students to be able to answer with. Here you can see I'm just drawing a few little circles off to the side that my students can drag and drop to select their answer. They're also able to type their response directly in the circle, so it's really just whatever you prefer and you can just make that expectation clear to them in the instructions of your assignment. Once you have your assignment the way you like it, whether it's an original piece or one that you've just turned digital yourself, it's time to share it with your students and my favorite way to do that is through Google Classroom. From your Google Classroom, you can go to Classwork and then Create and I make this an assignment. From here, you'll title your assignment and then give it a nice little description with more specific instructions. And when that's finished, you can use the little panel to the right to decide exactly who gets the assignment, when it's due, when it's assigned to them, so on and so forth. And then I add the assignment by going to Add, Google Drive, and then locating the slides. If you want each student to turn in his or her own slide, go to the drop down and hit Make a Copy for Each Student. After that, you're ready to hit assign or schedule if you have made this in advance for a later date. And then you can also go and access it and see exactly what your students will see when they open the assignment. Even if we don't do digital learning this year or just do it for a little while, I do plan on using these in my classroom more this year because it is a great way to integrate tech in the classroom. And yeah, that about does it for making any resource digital. watching this tutorial. I really hope it helps you not only this year, but in school years to come. As always, if you have any questions, make sure you leave those in the comments below because I would be happy to reply. Also, never forget to give the video a thumbs up if you want more like this, and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss another video with me. Until then, I will see you next time.